Hey, we're here today with Gregory Martin, a great Los Angeles painter. Um, I've been a fan of yours for years. Um, Thank you. I'm trying to think of the first time I saw your work. I think it was down at um, at the uh, George Billis Gallery in Culver yeah. City. That's a number yeah. of years ago now. Yeah. yeah. So uh, um, tell us about your new work. Well, um, I, I have a smaller studio now, so I'm doing smaller pieces. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, the... and, and that partly has to do with the economy, too. <laughs> so trying to survive. Well, how big is the average piece now? Um, you, you know, I've been doing a lot that are 12 by 20, roughly. Uh, foot by a foot and a half? Yeah, I, I, right now a series of uh, kind of orphan signs I find around town. The ones that are on buildings from maybe 50, 60, 70 years ago that are still there, but the business is long gone. And Businesses or have any, any, um, any, any uh, nuclear fallout shelter signs? I haven't found any of those. I, I, I usually try to find ones that, that no longer have any legible um, topography on them so that the text is not a part of how you uh, okay. read them. They're, they're more just artifacts of time passing. And they, they end up being like almost like a, a functional abstract painting? In a way, they do. Yeah, they're, they're, they're actually quite realistic. Well, no, you're but, doing a realistic rendition of but, a functional but abstract But the object thing. itself is kind of functions as an yeah. abstract sculptural, you know, but in two dimensions, so it is you know, more of an abstract painting. So your, your interest has always been, from the work I've seen, in, um, in decay and yeah. uh, desolation. What, why are, what are those themes uh, running through? Well, I, I think, you know, the de desolation, it's kind of a, a, a threat of alienation and um, displacement that traces back to Edward Hopper's work of um, kind of the world around you going in directions that just seem nuts and, and you feel a little bit uh, displaced from that. Yeah. Ugly America. But you're, well, I you're, wouldn't say ugly, but, but just kind of um, sort of leaving some of the nicer human qualities of community behind well there's also a there's a, a haunting uh it, it, your naturalist you, you know in, in your natural landscapes there's a haunting quality because yeah. of the, the lack of what we're used to seeing in these yeah. types of paintings Flora, yeah fauna, pretty yeah. flowers you've got half dead palm trees and... yeah and and i think it's you know i spend a lot of time outdoors walking around and and just looking at things and i'm i'm very that's how I interact with the world is through my vision and um, I see things maybe a little differently and, and that's kind of what I'm trying to present is to look at things that we're all around every day but to see them in a way that we've maybe never seen them before. Wow. And there's, there's a little bit of a, like the word trance or meditative quality, sort of a, a space that you can meditate upon and project things from your own life into and, and some of that recognizability of the stuff that's around us every day functions that way in that you, you identify with these things and I, I also tend to look particularly in the plant life I select for a human gestural quality to where like an anthropomorphic tree yeah yeah exactly um, that that there's maybe you can sort of look at the gesture present in the tree hmm. and connect with almost an emotional state that that might uh, reflect. That could be you. That yeah. Could, that tree could be yeah. you. Yeah, or, okay. or, you know, your, your uncle that beat you when you were young or, or <laughs> your brother that, How always, did you know? that always made you laugh, you know. Oh. And um, just I, I kind of look for that in the selection process, and then they get put together kind of like a cheesy melodrama, you know, of, of bad actors overplaying their roles. And so, so there is a, a bit of pathos in your work. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, great, great. Yeah. Wow. There, um, there is this narrative. I, I, I worked as an illustrator for a number of years, which is a very narrative way of looking at artwork, um, telling a story or... Do you think with them, and I, I'm assuming they're oil painting. Is it acrylic yeah, yeah, or these, oil? These are oils, yeah. And, and, and I'm, I'm assuming that, that you, you want more than just the narrative, though. You want that poetic uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. And, you know, some of the color harmonies and some of the, the sort of large, colorful spaces. I mean, they're very muted colors, but when you look at them over time, a lot of color comes out of those spaces. There, there's layers of paint, um, cool. but um, a, a lot of that also relates to color field painting and abstraction and, and um, 
people like Barnett Newman and how he kind of arranged things within his abstract. Not the first thing I would think when I look at your work. <laughs> yeah, but, but nonetheless, that's an influence. And, and I, I think a lot of that work has a meditative quality. Where oh, I understand. You, 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 you still you, want to get into that same conceptual, like or the, same, the same physical brain space. Yeah, yeah, it's it's almost like a mental state where where things are kind of quieting down a little bit, and you're reflective as opposed to agitated. Cool, cool. Hey, we'll be back right after this with more with Gregory Martin. Hey, we're back with Gregory Martin and uh, a great painter. How do you feel about the art world? Um, maybe there are elements within the art world who are more conceptual based or maybe more uh, social intervention based that look at painting, especially painting of nature, and consider you to be, um, I don't know, I don't wanna, I'm not saying this, but one could, there are arguments out there that the type of work you do is like old fuddy-duddy work. I mean, how do you? Yeah, do you... I, I, I think it's the the form that it takes. I'm I'm. You know, but at this point in time, I mean, is an abstract painting really a new thing? Is making video art really a new thing? Is this is um, video? This I, is my art, <laughs> dude. <laughs> but yeah, like like Marcel Duchamp. I mean, that's a hundred year old art. That's you know. Yeah, I mean, is 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 doing something where the whole art is an idea, a new thing? You know, that's that's old art too. And, uh -huh. and um, D David Amico once said to me that uh, he I, he was someone I worked with in grad school um, and said that. It's not what you do; it's what you do with it. Mm. You know, it's that you take it someplace that you, that you and, engage with. So it. you went to Claremont graduate. I, I did, yeah. Um, yeah. And 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 did you have a football scholarship there? I actually, it was field hockey. I had to wear the little <laughs> plaid. Uh, hey, we have a section on our show called Material Secrets, mm -hmm. and on Material Secrets, we ask you, as an established artist, can you help with younger artists, people with you know, mid-career, struggling in the studio. Is there some material secret you have that you want to share? I used to do drawings with uh, paint uh, remover and light it on fire, and then that would burn the drawing into the piece of wood. Um, so your material secret is arson. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> it's fun to burn stuff, yeah. Wow. Hey, Gregory <laughs> Martin, thanks for being here. Okay, thank you very much, Matt. Mm -hmm.